What is customer experience and how do we get there? We're speaking with Nate Skinner. He is the Senior Vice President of Global Marketing with Oracle. Nate, tell us about your background in customer experience and tell us about what you do for Oracle. I started out as a seller back in the late 90s of software technology. Uh, and I've been focused on customers ever since. So I spent 10 years in the field working with customers, doing sales. Then I did sales engineering, product management, ultimately led to a marketing career in product marketing and then marketing, which I've been doing for the last 10 years. Uh, now in my role leading the marketing team for our customer experience solutions at Oracle, uh, we are bringing to, to market to customers technology that allows them to realize the promise of extraordinary customer experience uh, today. And your role with, with Oracle, what does that encompass? So I'm responsible for marketing of the solution that we have here for uh, what sometimes referred to as the front office. It's our customer facing applications. So sales, customer service, marketing, commerce, advertising, uh, all the products that Oracle brings to market for those capabilities are all under the, the portfolio that I'm responsible for marketing. So I lead marketing for that, that portfolio globally. Nate, customer experience has become such a prominent buzzword. When we talk about customer experience, tell us what it actually means in practical terms. It is really the experience we impart on a customer when they engage with our company, our employees, or our brand. And how we do that in a consistent way, uh, whether that engagement is through a social channel, whether that engagement is through a customer service call or chat, whether that engagement is through an interaction with a seller, a sales rep, or even how the engagement might feel to a customer who is on a commerce site trying to buy something in a self-service way. All of those touch points uh, represent the customer experience. and. Professionals focused on making that as extraordinary as they can are looking at ways to do that in a digital fashion, uh, taking advantage of the technology that's available to impart the best experience they can no matter where the customer starts their, their interaction. And that to me is what it means practically. It's all of those different touch points for a customer uh, need to be as good or extraordinary as you can possibly make them. And technology can help make that happen. Nate. Why is customer experience so important that everybody's focused on it right now? Customers have so many choices. I mean, at the end of the day, you and I know, you know, we can browse to a website, not get what we want, not have a great experience and immediately open another tab and go somewhere else. Um, the power of choice is in the hands of every customer. And so more than ever before, we need to make sure that their experience with our companies is as good as we can possibly make it. Our, our attention spans are so small these days that if we can't capture your imagination about how whatever we're offering can help you, Mr. or Mrs. Customer, uh, in a few seconds, we probably don't have a customer. And that's why I think it's so important and such an imperative today. It's no longer something nice to have, uh, it's a must have. And it's a kind of a tier one strategy for many companies today. Historically, customers would go into a retail store. They were surrounded, the environment, they were there in the store. And now, as you say, with digital, a customer defection is, not, is no farther away than a click, that customer choice, as you were just describing. So to summarize, so attracting customers, customer loyalty, ultimately maintaining your revenue streams. Those are the benefits of customer experience. But how do we get there? The interaction that has the most volume is customer support. If that's true, then I would focus on trying to make sure that you're imploring a great customer experience at the moment of need with, with regard to a support or the customer call center. Um, on the other hand, if you're a high volume sales organization and you have thousands of sellers out there, uh, you may want to focus your customer experience efforts on the sales process and technology such that your sellers are assuring the best possible experience for that customer. Uh, so I think the answer around how you get going is to pick, you know, what is causing you the most uh, problem? What's, what's the hurdle you'd like to overcome the most, whether it's support, whether it's the commerce website for your company, 
whether it's the customer support channel, maybe it's your social media and your marketing channels where you're trying to reach customers and they're engaging, but you're not getting conversion rates. You know, that could be a place to focus your customer experience efforts. What I would not suggest is that you try to do it all at one time. It's just, it's, it's so many things to so many companies. And the best approach is to kind of pick the problem that you know you can really dive deep on, uh, solve for that, and then move on. Michael, if I could add one more thing, is, is not do any of those in, in a silo, right? So if we, if we focus on customer service, you know, when Michael calls or chats us uh, in our customer support channel, what's that experience like for the customer? We don't wanna disconnect that experience from what it's like for a customer who wants to buy from us, what it's like for a customer who gets a marketing ad or a campaign. Uh, we want to connect them and the connection is the interaction itself. And so uh, from the technology point of view, having data at the center that connects all those engagements across any one of those touch points is a critical component to realizing the ultimate promise of customer experience across those touch points. Don't, don't fix for one and forget about the rest. Think about them in the context of a kind of orchestration. Is data the key to breaking down the silos as you were just describing? I think that data is, if it's not the key, it is the long pole in the tent. If you're not flowing information about that customer's engagement, interaction, and interests across those various touch points between service, support, sales, and marketing, um, you're not going to achieve the customer experience that you'd like to on behalf of your customers. And so data is definitely a centerpiece, but the data we're talking about is uh, going to, it's all centered on the customer, but from the support channel, you know, how many cases do we have with this customer? Have we resolved them all? Are they happy? Is an input that we need for the selling motion and the sell, sales process, which is an input that we need for how we market to that customer to get to buy, them to buy the next best product we have to offer to continue to expand that customer lifetime value. You know, all of those meaningful interactions that the customer has had with us need to flow seamlessly between those you know, functions within your company. And so in that regard, data is absolutely essential. Uh, taking advantage of it is, is another thing. And Oracle, you know, we provide solutions like this to companies of all sizes and all industries across, around the world um, who are starting to recognize the power of doing this well. And, the, and you mentioned it earlier, kind of the benefits to their business of getting this right. Nate, we've been discussing the components of implementing a customer experience program. And we've talked about data. We just spoke about technology. Are there other pieces involved? The question that I get asked a lot is who owns this problem? Like who owns solving for this problem? And, and a lot of people just assume it's the marketer, but that's not true. Uh, I'm getting to the issue is the other pieces involved are people. Honestly, the technology can solve for a lot if you have a vision and you have the kind of um, incentive to get this fixed, you can fix it. Uh, the processes can be mapped. You can look at ways to flow data between sales, service, marketing, commerce, and advertising. But if the people aren't invested in making those things seamless and recognizing that we're doing this in service of customer loyalty and value to the customer, then it will fail. Um, and I've seen that happen. You know, everybody gets myopic about, well, all I care about is my number, you know, the sellers. Marketers, all I care about is my conversion rates and lead funnel. Um, support people, all I care about is, you know, uh, case deflection and reducing costs. Well, not a single one of those things I just said had the customer in them. And the customer experience puts the customer in front of all of those things and says, hold on, every one of us needs to work together, technology as an enablement layer to make this different for our company. And those that are doing this well, are exceeding every expectation of their shareholders and their stakeholders. Nate, where does personalization fit into this customer experience universe? Personalization is right in or in a, thereabouts the center of the issue here or the challenge. Um, I personally believe that personalization has distracted a lot of companies and a lot of professionals who care passionately about the customer experience. Um, from getting something done. And what I mean by that is it's, it's all the rage, right? Personalization, the right message at the right time to the right audience. Of course, that's what we all want and aspire to, to deliver. Uh, 
but don't let that paralyze your effort. This, Michael, I think is what people often miss is that customer experience is not a marketing thing or a service thing or a commerce thing or an advertising thing. It's all of the above. And if you take on personalization and try to attach that to every one of those touch points, you could be talking about it for years and never have made a step forward. Tell us what Oracle is doing with customer experience. We are making a lot of investments on the product side around this area. We have, I mentioned earlier, uh, I'm responsible for marketing the customer experience portfolio from Oracle. It includes advertising capabilities, our product line around Moat. It includes Eloqua and our responses products for marketing automation and, and email marketing and a lot more loyalty management system. Uh, there's lots of data elements and data capabilities. We have sales products and service products. So we have we have a technology solution for the front office, and I, I call it the front office, you know, the sales service marketing folks, um, and even advertising and commerce to a, to a certain extent. Uh, we have products that solve a lot of these problems for those users and those teams. And then the better news is that we have an underlying platform that unifies them all so that we can indeed move data between every one of those touch points about a customer to assure that their experience is as good as you could possibly make it. Um, all built on Oracle cloud infrastructure uh, for kind of scalability, elasticity, and, and, and trust, you know, the most secure platform on earth. Nate, you're thinking a lot about the future of customer experience, where it's going, as well as the types of products that need to be developed. So tell us about the future. Where is this going? A big part of where it's going is the application of machine learning and AI. You know, a lot of the scenarios we described, you know, we have all this data, again, that tells us about what our customers bought and what they own and their experience with our brand to date, whether it was through cases they've opened or calls they've made to our support team. So using machine learning and automation to construct a story, a narrative for that customer that's unique to them, that I think is a big part of what the future is all about. That's one. Michael, another one, another future kind of evolution of, of customer experience is the what we're seeing in the convergence of marketing technology and advertising technology, MarTech and ad tech. And what we're seeing is that you know, when you're marketing and trying to grow customers and find new customers and find leads for sellers or just generate revenue through direct uh, to consumer, um, the effort to do so is highly dependent on advertising and reaching the right audience with the right message, making sure that your brand is safe. You know, uh, when you're doing ads on a particular publication, they're not ads that are inappropriate for what's currently being discussed in an article or in the news. So like, those capabilities are starting to come more together where we're looking at ways to really drive compelling and engaging advertisement to the right person at the right time with a message that's appropriate given where they're looking at this ad. And then turning that into a lead, turning that into a, a nurture that we bring that customer along uh, for, for the experience to continue to grow. That is another kind of direction we see happening and we're taking a lot uh, of energy and investment internally at Oracle to bring that to life even more so going forward uh, for our customers. Nate, we've been talking about customer experience, what it is, what are the components? How does somebody listening get started? I ultimately, the advice I give the customers I speak to who ask me that very question is always to let's talk about where the clearest opportunity for you to apply technology and and process alignment can, can really elevate the customer's experience and increase uh, lifetime loyalty or lifetime brand affinity with that client. Uh, I think the, the second part of that conversation, Michael, is always what, how will we measure if it worked? You know, marketers are notorious, and I'm one, so I can say this, uh, at talking about generating all kinds of things, impressions and um, leads and traffic, but very seldom do we talk about the implications of what that did to our company. Pick a problem that you know you can kind of attack and solve, but also one that you can measure. Because if it's not measurable, uh, you won't be able to use that as a business case for doing more of the things we've talked about already. Any other tips or advice for folks as they're beginning this journey? 
I'd say uh, two things. One is don't be paralyzed by the complexity. This stuff's hard. You know, any vendor out there that's making this sound like it's a no-brainer and easy uh, is, you know, frankly, fake news. I mean, this is hard. And uh, companies like Oracle have invested millions and millions of dollars in building products that make it easier. But even then, you know, you have to have smart people at the table willing to put in the effort to make this work. But the second thing I'd say is take a step, whether it's to affect the sales process or to affect the customer service support process or to affect your marketing investments, do something to start to address this for your company and you'll see the benefits come in customer retention and customer experiences levels that go up. And then you can start to look for other ways to increase uh, the, the angles at which you attack the problem. Okay, Nate Skinner, Senior Vice President of Global Marketing at Oracle. Thank you so much for speaking with us about customer experience. Thank you, Michael, for having me. Appreciate it.